Hey, welcome to Mountain Slider Garage. In our last clutch video, we talked about how to set your belt deflection and also how to check your belt to sheath clearance. Video after that, we talked about how to replace your weight bushings in your primary clutch, your PB85 primary clutch. Today, we're going to be talking about these five things over here and how to get your primary and secondary clutch properly set up to transfer the best amount of power you can to your track and also have for best performance. So let's just talk about a few of these things. I mean, we hear about these things, we hear about alignment a lot, but I think people kind of group all these things into alignment. Alignment is pretty much one specific thing. Let's talk about first, center to center measurement. People don't talk about that a ton. It's not really something you can change because of your engine, it's how it's designed, but let's just talk about that. So center to center is just the center of your crankshaft. This is an engine, pistons, crankshaft goes through there. This is your jack shaft, your secondary clutch is here. If you draw a line straight from the center of the jack shaft, straight to the center of the crankshaft, on the Polaris axis, this is supposed to be 11.5 inches from center to center. Now, is that not the end of the world if that's not 100% perfect? Because you can make a little bit of movement up in there with your belt deflection adjustment. And since the jack shaft is mounted permanently in here and the crankshaft and the engine is mounted fairly permanently, it's not real easy to adjust that measurement. So I just wanted to make you aware of that measurement. Okay, let's talk about alignment. Alignment a lot of times gets confused in with these other things. If we look at alignment, alignment is your relationship of your crankshaft centerline to your jackshaft centerline. Now in a perfect world, we would want those completely parallel for our belt to wear evenly. But there's another measurement here that comes into play that that's not necessarily the case. So just remember, alignment is the alignment between the relationship between the center line of your crankshaft and the center line of your jack shaft in that, in that space. So the next one, which is re also related to that, is lead in. And that goes back to this parallelism between the crankshaft and the jack shaft. So what lead in is, in a perfect world, like I said, the measurement here and the measurement here would be exactly the same. Those two would be exactly parallel. But what Polaris does, they built into your engine something called lead-in. So what happens when your primary clutch out here grips the belt, it pulls on the belt. It wants to turn the secondary. Secondary has a lot of resistance. It doesn't really want to turn because it's got the, the uh, drive shaft down here, the drivers plus the weight of the sled and the weight of you. It doesn't really want to turn. So it takes a lot of torque to start turning that. And it really wants to just pull the engine. It wants to pull the engine this direction. And so what happens is Polaris designed this with a little bit of lead in. So you, instead of your crankshaft being completely parallel to with this like this, it's moved up like this a little bit. And so that's called the lead in. So what happens when your clutch engages and engages the belt and under, under extreme load, it's gonna, the engine's gonna move on the rubber motor mounts. It's gonna pull the engine back into parallel against the rubber motor mounts and hold it there. And then when you let off the gas, it's gonna go back a little bit and then when you get on the gas again, under high torque situations, it's going to pull it back. So that's lead in. Lead in. So this is from the Polaris service manual for the axis. When we're talking about lead in, this is what Polaris says about lead in. The drive clutch is mounted in the bulkhead at a slight angle when compared to the driven clutch. So the jack shaft and the engine are slight, are slight angle to each other. When the driver applies throttle and the drive clutch engages the belt, the drive clutch will self-align with the driven clutch. That's kind of what we talked about, that lead in. You, want, you don't want them completely parallel to each other, but when the engine accelerates and you put load on, it's gonna bring them back into parallel. You, you want that, um, what he says here, at a slight angle when compared to each other, the crankshaft and the jackshaft. The other thing you have to be careful of with lead-in is you see a lot of people that put torque straps on their engine. What a torque strap is, something that hooks on your frame here, comes down, hooks on your engine here. What that's supposed to do, that's supposed to keep your belt from your engine from moving too much and keep your belt from abnormally wearing. But the problem with that, if you're not allowing with your torque strap here or your torque arm, your engine to move back here into parallel, that actually torque arm can actually cause you more problems than it's trying to solve. If it's hold, because it, it could hold your engine in the lead in state and not allow it to go back to the parallel state where it's gonna have proper belt wear and proper performance on your clutches. So that's lead in. Not really something that's easy to adjust just because it's built into the motor mounts on the sled and the motor mounts on the axis aren't really easy to adjust. Next one, offset. The offset is the relationship between 
your primary clutch and your secondary clutch. And let's show you what that is. So you have your primary clutch on engine like this. You have your secondary clutch right here. These run parallel to each other almost like this. What the offset is, is the relationship of the primary clutch and the secondary clutch in this space. So this is offset, this is offset. You can adjust the offset in and out like this with spacers on the back of your secondary clutch and we're going to show you how to do that to get the right offset on your machine. All right, the last thing we're going to talk about is float. Now, this float and offset kind of also get confused for the same thing because they're a little bit similar. What float is, when you have your secondary clutch secured on your jack shaft, it's made to have a little bit of back and forth movement like this. You don't want a lot. We're going to go over how to adjust the float as well and what the specs should be. Some people spec it out quite a bit. Some people recommend it being smaller in the player service manual. I think it's um, 30 thousandths to 50 thousandths float, the little bit of movement you want back and forth like this. You don't want no float because if you have no float and this is surmounted 100% securely on the jack shaft, it can cause premature wear and with the side loading on the jack shaft bearing that's back here. So you do want a little bit of float and we're going to show you how to adjust that. The things you're going to need, you're going to need an alignment bar to do all this stuff. I use a TRS bar. It's a great bar. I've been using it for a couple of years now. Um, sold by TRS Performance. You can get it on their Facebook page or Tony that owns TRS Performance. You can find them on Snow West. Also, the same bar is sold by Indy Specialties, Indy Dan on Snow West. And so Indy Specialties is the performance uh, machine shop and aftermarket shop in Minnesota, I believe. But they've been a performance player uh, manufacturer and dealer for many, many years. And uh, you can buy it there or from TRS. So we're going to use this bar to use ours. And then we're going to go over to the TV here. We're going to show you a couple of other bars and why you need to know the exact specs of the bar you're using. Because every bar is not created 100% equal. Some bars are made a little bit different, so the specs, how you use the bar is going to be a little bit different. So let's just show you a little bit of difference between alignment bars. So, because not all of them are created equal. So let's go over here. This is why you can't use the same measurements for every alignment bar. So this alignment bar is made to attach to the primary clutch here, but it goes on the back side of the primary clutch, where you're going to measure is back here. So, a different kind of alignment bar. This alignment bar goes on the outside of the secondary clutch, but goes through the middle of the sheaths here, just rests there, and then you have to take measurements from here and there to adjust your offset and your alignment. So it's different than this bar, because this bar, this is fixed here. You're taking measurements back here on your secondary clutch. And then another type of bar, this is actually the Polaris bar that if you buy from Polaris, this one is fixed here in the sheath. You put this down here in your primary sheath, and you take measurements out here on the outside of your secondary clutch. So three different types of bars that are sold. Each bar is going to have different measurements on how you set uh, and measure the alignment and the offset. So you can't just use the same measurements that I'm going to show you when I, set the, when I check the alignment on this snowmobile back here. You can't use those on every bar because all the bars are designed differently. The one other thing, so if you set a TRS bar like I have on top of the Polaris bar, if you set them both in the clutch here, you can see how much difference there is back here on the secondary clutch. You can see that difference there and that difference there. There's a lot of difference built into these bars. And one of the things that's built into the bars, and you have to know this if you're adjusting your clutch and measuring these align your alignment and your offset, some bars have the lead-in built into them. Some bars, the lead-in, you have to actually measure. And those are two different, another way that you can be off in your measurements. So you have to know what your bar is, how to use it, and what your measurements are for your bar, and if it has lead-in built into it, or if it doesn't have lead-in built into it, and it has these built in parallel. We're going to go over the snowmobile now. We're going to take the, the, style of the whole snowmobile apart so you can see the clutches. We're going to show you how to use the TRS bar to set our alignment to set our offset and to set our float on this machine. Okay, now I got the video pointing straight down on both clutches so you can kind of really see what we're doing here. Now when you put this alignment bar in here, you have to make sure this fits in here really well because you want to make sure these two edges, that edge and that edge, need to fit tightly against the clutch there and over here on this side. 
You need to make, you need to make sure because your alignment's not going to be right, your offset's not going to be right, unless those two places are touching exactly where they're supposed to be. Okay, so get those two parts in perfectly, touching both the front edge and this other edge over here on the clutch. Okay, so we're going to get our bar down in here. Now we can see our front edge and our back edge are both tied up against our primary clutch. You can see how much room I have out here. I mean, my clutch, when we adjust this, we want this for correct offset and alignment, we want the secondary clutch just barely touching right here like that. I've got all this room. I don't want that much room. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to put more shims on the back of the jack shaft back here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. If you, want, if you want to know how much space you need, you can either use something to measure this gap with so you can get close. Like I'm here, I'm about 160 thousandths inch gap, so I'm going to have to put about 160 thousandths inches of washers back behind the jack, on the jack shaft back there in order to bring the secondary out to where it touches the bar right here. So we got our secondary off. We're going to measure this one. That's about, that's 120 thousandths shim, so I'm going to need about 40 more thousandths. That's a 50 thousandths. That might actually give me too much. That one's 60. I'm going to try those two and just kind of see where we get with those two shims. It might be a little bit too far. Now, just to let you know, this is where my clutching came from the factory, from Polaris. So you can see I was 150 thousandths off from when the sled was new from the, from the Polaris factory. So we've got our clutch back on there. When you do this, you want to make sure your secondary is pushed all the way up against those washers real tight. I'm going to put our measuring bar back in here again. And we, I don't have any side play movement now. Both the front edge and the back edge of my primary clutch are touching where they're supposed to be. I'm going to try it with taking the one, the thinnest washer out and just kind of see where we're at. So put this back on touching again. See, I still have a little bit of play that's just a little bit too much. Now you can also, that washer just barely slides in and out of there really nicely. So I know if I put this one back on, it's going to take up all of my space just like I want. So I'm going to put that one back on and that should get our clutch offset exactly where we want it. So we'll put our bar back on and that's touching again. I don't have any movement in anything. So that's right where we want the offset from the primary clutch to the secondary clutch. They're right where they're supposed to be for the clutch, for the belt to ride right where it's supposed to have the optimal performance and the optimal wear pattern. Now, that's we want that touching there, but if we want proper lead in like we talked about, we want our motor cocked a little bit like that so the back edge isn't gonna touch. So if you can see back here, our back edge, we have space back here in between our secondary clutch and our alignment bar. We're touching here, not touching there. That is our lead in. So when our when we get on the gas and our engine torques and moves back, if this bar was sitting here, this bar would tweak, this would be touching and that would be touching when our motor torques just a little bit. That's the lead in. Now we have our bar our bar on, we're touching at the trailing edge and the leading edge of the primary clutch like we're supposed to. We're touching here at the leading edge of the secondary clutch and we have our gap back here that tells us that we have our lead in about where it's supposed to be. Now I'm just going to measure my lead in. Technically they say you want your lead in not any tighter than 30 thousandths and I have a 60 thousandth shim. My 60 thousandths doesn't quite fit in there. If I take a thinner one it fits a little bit. So I've got somewhere between about 30 and 60 thousandths, which isn't bad. And remember, the lead-in, I can't change unless I go in and somehow I'm able to adjust my motor mounts and turn my engine back and forth. So I'm happy with that because I'm not going to be able to really change it much. If yours is really out of whack and you want to change it, contact TRS because he's having some billet motor mounts made up that allow you to move the motor a little bit and really fine-tune this. But for mine, I'm really happy with where we're at. We're touching there. We're touching the two spots there. We have probably 50 thousandths gap back here, which is really good. Now, the last thing we're going to do, our lead-in where it's supposed to be, 
our offset's where it's supposed to be, our alignment's where it's supposed to be. The last thing we want to do is do our float on our secondary clutch. Our setup, we want about 30 thousandths of float on our secondary. The Polaris service manual says about 30 to 50 thousandths. We run it a little tighter just because we feel like the specs and the alignment is so much better with the TRS bar that we don't feel like we need that much. Remember, you don't want to have it not have any. So I'm going to measure this. We're going to measure between the clutch and this big washer out here with a feeler gauge. And we're going to see if we can get about 30,000. So I got a going to measure between those two. I have a little bit of room. That's 30,000 right there. And I have a little bit more play than I want. To adjust the float on the secondary clutch, you're going to want to take the secondary clutch bolt out. You're going to want to remove this spacer. And then you've got this myriad of different washers in here that you can remove or put new washers in to adjust that little bit of float we're going to adjust in here. Now essentially, if you look in the service manual, they have two washers. They have this one that's a 60 thousandths washer, and they have this one that's about a 100 thousandths washer. And by changing those washers in and out, you should be able to get that really close to about that 30 thousandths of float that we want. So you can put this back in. You want to put some blue Loctite on this, is what I always do, because it seems like this bolt always comes loose. And then also torque this down to about 18 foot pounds. So I've got 40 thousandths in feeler gauges here. I've got, it's pretty tight at 40. I think I'm going to be happy with 40 because I don't, it, it's, it's going to take me really changing out a lot of those shims to try and get it any tighter than that. So I think I'm going to be happy with 40 there. Now we've got all of our stuff checked and adjusted as best we can on this. We've checked the alignment. We've checked the, and adjusted the offset. We've checked and adjusted the float and we have checked the lead in. All those things are really within spec, almost right on perfectly. Next thing we'll do, we'll put our belt on here, set our belt deflection correctly, and this sled will be perfect all winter long. Probably won't have any belt issues. Like I said, I've been using this TRS alignment bar for, this will be the third season. I've done it on a number of sleds, and the belt heat goes way down. The belt wear goes way down. I mean, I'm getting a thousand miles on an Axis turbo sled with the boondocker, you know, turbo. So I'm super happy with the TRS alignment bar. Highly recommend it. Uh, I hope this will help you guys understand how the system works better, how to adjust it and keep your clutches in tip top shape for your snowmobile this winter. Tune in next time for more videos on how to keep your snowmobile working well. We're going to do also going to do some product review videos. Um, we're also going to do a video where we deck this thing out in a bunch of uh, aftermarket parts, make this sled into kind of a backcountry warrior. And so tune in next time. I appreciate you watching. Uh, make sure you share the videos, like the videos, go down here and subscribe to the YouTube page down here, and we'll see you next time on Mountain Sledder Garage. <laughs>